It was a ceremony that was decades, if not centuries, in the making. The consecration of a new temple built in the name of the Hindu god Ram on the site of what was once a mosque destroyed by mobs of Hindus in 1992. Secularism is still the constitutional law of the land in India. Yet the ritual showcases a Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, whose words could be mistaken for a priest's. Ram Bharat ki aastha hai. Ram Bharat ka aadhar hai. Ram Bharat ka vichar hai. Ram Bharat ka vidhan hai. With an election coming, Modi's speech sounds suspiciously like a campaign kickoff. The crowd drawn to the northern city of Ayodhya includes movie stars, politicians, industrialists, cricket players, and journalists from India's hundreds of news channels. So, Ram, to Ram, saath, Ram Hindi media. Indian media and Hindi language media in particular have often shown their communal bias. With the coverage of the Ram Temple, it's reaching a new crescendo. This is why it's a good thing, because after 500 years of Pratikshah, Bhagawan Ram Lala is in his house. Let's say with absolute pride, Jai Shri Ram. It's being politicized deeply. Nobody really quite believes that this is disconnected from the election. Why do you even need to uh, contest an election? It, it, this is ordained and the media is buying it hook, line and sinker and is a very active part of propagating and pushing it. Ram Bhakti Me Dube Modi ko desh mehsoos kar sakta hai. You have to understand the context of it. Uh, it is political because the reconstruction of the temple that came about because of a relentless political struggle. But that doesn't mean that it is not religious because the, the yearning of the people to see their deity Lord Ram on the site where he was born, that is a deeply religious yearning. Such yearnings can come at a communal cost, as Indians saw in December of 1992, when a crowd of militant Hindus tore down the mosque that stood on the same site, the Babri Masjid. It was named after Babur, the Mughal emperor, who had it built centuries before. The riots that then erupted across India killed an estimated 2,000 people. Hindus had long argued that the site was Ram's place of birth, that an ancient temple there had been destroyed to make way for the mosque. Despite a lack of evidence of that, the BJP party that Narendra Modi now leads adopted it as an article of faith. This story provides a measure of how the Indian media have changed and embraced Hindutva, the BJP's hardcore brand of religious nationalism led by all those news channels, many owned by corporations in cahoots with the BJP, the narrative has shifted accordingly compared to 1992. In those days, there was still a certain thinking that one does not destroy the house of worship of other people. And the media shared in that view, largely. There were editorials written that expressed their sorrow at these developments. We didn't have the presence of private television that we have today. And that has made a great deal of difference. India Today, for instance, they call it a dark day and head hanging in shame. But now you would think you're, you're part of watching a religious channel. There are thousands and hundreds of religious channels here. But it's very hard to kind of distinguish between news and those kind of frenzy generating sort of channels. Hindi media. Hindi media is proclaiming the inauguration of the Ram Temple as a historical moment for the country. But it hides its history. It avoids any objective scrutiny or discussion of the criminal acts that led to its construction. In the past decade, the Hindutva discourse, the idea of a natural Hindu supremacy, has become the dominant discourse. It has no place for secularism, whether it's Kannada, Assamese, English or Hindi media, you will invariably see them speaking the language of Hindutva. And dressing the part, news sets in Ayodhya decked out with images of Lord Ram, journalists using language far more reverential than reporter-like.
अपने महल में पहुंचे हैं This jettisoning of journalistic balance now reflects what many Hindus, right-wingers and nationalists have argued since 1947 that India's independence leaders made an historic mistake. Unlike Pakistan, which became a Muslim country, India declared itself secular, vowing that minorities such as Muslims, Sikhs, Christians and others would be the equals of the Hindu majority. That historical grievance amongst some Hindus festered for decades before being tapped into by Narendra Modi's BJP. Hate crimes against Muslims and other minorities have risen on Modi's watch, including more attacks on Muslim-owned businesses this past week. For the news channels catering to the huge Hindu market, including Hindu supremacists, defending secularism now ranks low on their list of editorial priorities and that is an understatement the ram temple is in fact the edifice of a hindu indian state no other news in the country is worth reporting it's a new era that this is a temple of national consciousness jo prime time shows hain dusre shows hain prime time news shows seem to be in a competition to outdo each other in plumbing new depths India today is the first channel to get you the divinity on television. Babri Masjid ka girna agar ek the destruction of the Babri Mosque was also the destruction of secularism in India. Now it's the act of cleaning away the debris of secularism. Saaf kar diya gaya hai. The founders of India said that we will remain a secular nation. So there is this history of trying to curb communal feelings. and to bring people together so that is the history that is now slowly being erased what you're going to see is a sharpening of these divides as the hindutva projects takes off even more and that's the worry these fears are completely unfounded because the nature of hindu religion is not properly understood india is the only country in this in this neighborhood which is a democracy which has never had a coup and where the minorities are thriving and that is happening because the hindus are inherently plural india is not a hindu theocratic state on the contrary india is an aspirational state there's also the timing the electoral factor and the otherwise inexplicable rush to consecrate a temple that's still being built India's opposition parties and anti-BJP coalition that includes the Congress party's Rahul Gandhi boycotted the consecration calling it politicized unworthy of a secular India. They too are campaigning in an election that is yet to be called by marching across India encountering voters. What they are not attracting are audiences. In a media space that is ever faithful to the BJP they cannot compete with Narendra Modi at the best of times let alone when Modi has Lord Ram at his side if not on it aur ye isliye bahut dilchasp hai ki the biggest opposition leader Rahul Gandhi is drawing large crowds but the story is getting buried in an obscure corner inside the newspaper every front page has stories pouring over every detail of the temple where is this taking the country we were promised an india that was egalitarian and diverse a land where everyone could live in peace that dream of india seems to be over and the imagery around it kind of takes mr modi as beyond politics he's imbued in this hierarchy of the gods the media's participation a lot of it is because they're being forced to do it they're terrified of the government but we must not discount those parts of the media who are completely willing participants in the propagandizing of this whole idea and pushing it forward what we are seeing is a mediatization of politics and a politicization of the media and they go hand in hand it's very difficult to in fact disentangle them i believe the temple consecration is the beginning of a new chapter in indian history and finally this past friday just 4 days after the consecration in ayodhya was republic day in india It's a national holiday that marks the adoption of the constitution back in 
So in the space of less than a week, Indians saw their secular ways that are supposed to be constitutionally protected take an apparent hit, and then they celebrated that same constitution as if nothing happened. We'll stay on the India story, and we'll be back with more on the ICJ decision and what it means for the people of Gaza. See you next time here at The Listening Post.